Hello and welcome to this week's League of Legends Top 25 Power Rankings where I cover the top 25 teams in the LOL Esports space as we're on our road to Worlds. All the regions are in their playoffs. Um, Latin America's playoffs are over. LCK's playoffs are over. They're on to regional qualifiers starting tomorrow. Um, so, actually I probably should get through the, the chores of the video, right? So, in the description you're going to find three links. The link to the Discord, if you'd like to go there, free, just join in. We BS, talk about the games as they occurred this morning. Watched uh, GAM and uh, Saigon Buffalo play. Um, that was the only league on besides a, well, there was a series in Japan on, but it definitely took the back seat. Um, you'll also find a link to my Twitter. Follow me there. I'm going to start posting my links on Twitter as well. Um, just trying to diversify. I mean, I got pretty lazy with the Twitter. And just focused 100% on YouTube. So I'm going to start just throwing the links out on there. Um, so follow me there. And lastly, there's a membership link. If you'd like to support me so I can continue making these videos, there's two tiers. There's a $3 tier. You get a badge. It shows up in the comment section when you make a comment. Um, that's pretty much just to tell me that you support me and actually want me to succeed at doing this. like, And willing to, you know, I guess... You know help me sustain um, for ten dollars a month you can get extra content tonight I will have the first video of that where I do my prediction on who I think will win tomorrow's games my roundup is going to continue it's just like it always has been I just never have put predictions up on there and for the extra content it will be with my predictions um, for those that want my insight on things or just want to know you know you want to support me and you get extra content so that's that um now with this i don't watch the minor regions play all that much i have been recently if you missed my minor region love video um i did watch try and watch one series in each region of like a top team um keep in mind i will not use those games really all that much with my to, I, I do not create well let's put it this way actually I have an opinion on these teams, but I also am aware that I'm only scratching the surface of these teams. So to grade them based off of one series would be ignorant in my opinion. It would be cheating because um, who knows, maybe the losing team had a bad day that day, literally. I mean, who who knows, right? So um, with the four major regions though, I've watched literally 95% of the games as split across all four major regions. So when it comes to major region teams, I have a good idea of where they stand. Minor region teams get scattered throughout this top 25 and that is mo mostly stats based. So now that that's all out of the way, onto this um, 25th place to start us off will be um, Misfits. Misfits lost to G2 three to one. It was pretty damn convincing, I'm not going to lie. I don't think Misfits are going to go to Worlds. I really don't. I think I said that in my Who's Going to Worlds video. I didn't even have Misfits in. So um, the fact that they've made it this far is, is nice, but the bot lane is not going to stack up very well against um, the likes of Fnatic, G2, Rogue, and, and Mad Lions. Um, and this meta is bot lane focused. If it was mid lane focused, Vatio might have a shot. But as it stands right now, I don't think they do. Um, I think that top side is, is Struggle Street, um, irrelevant, is pretty irrelevant when it comes to games. And Zanzara is very limited, and we knew that. I mean, it's a good story that Zanzara was able to make playoffs after being casted off of Astralis last split, and, I mean, doing better than Astralis has done now with Misfits. But at the same time, Misfits are extremely limited. Uh, there's not really much more I can say about that. Um, i got to move this notebook. I can't read what I wrote. Um, next, I have DRX. Uh, DRX didn't play, but they're into the top 25. I mean, they're the fifth Korean team, but Korea is an elite region, right? So, got to include them in here. I do think they are by far the worst team going into regional qualifiers. Um, but if Deft 1v9s, maybe there's a chance. If Pioshik can show up big tomorrow, maybe there's a chance. But, um, or I don't know who plays tomorrow. Actually, I shouldn't say that because I haven't looked at the roundup yet. I haven't even looked at the schedule. Um, I just know LPL finals, LCK, and LCS are tomorrow. But um, DRX, very limited. It's Deft and Pioshik at best, um, but more often than not, it's been Deft. So DRX, 24th. I think that they're, I mean, I think they beat the teams that they're above, um, but I don't think that they, you know, are 
you know, I have the LCK in the upper half of this top 25 for a reason. 23rd, we have PSG. Uh, PSG drop a bit. Actually, I won't lie. I don't know where they were last week. Um, PSG, though, they lost to... Um, they lost to Flying, Oy Flying Oyster last week, which knocked them into the loser's bracket, which was a surprise. They lost 3-2. to two. Um, PSG were the favorite. I felt like they were the favorite. They've been the favorite for years. Why would they not go to Worlds? And all of a sudden, they're in the loser's bracket, and it's like, holy crap, PSG might not go to Worlds, right? Like, it's going to backfire on them, allowing um, Juhan and uh, Bay to go for Gory and Burry. And Gory has played fantastic, but... Um, Burry has not been all that impactful. And um, so, PSG, I mean, Hanabi hasn't been all that great. But against J-Team, they come out ahead. They somehow beat J-Team. And if you missed my minor region love video, I'm going to put that in my, my outro boxes at the end. I have two outro boxes I put up now um, in the uh, outro, obviously. Jesus Christ. Um, and the minor region love video, I went over the PSG J team series. It is a banger PSG. I think three O's J team and games two and three were bangers. I mean, if you want to watch a game that you're like, how the hell did PSG win this watch games two and three PSG cannot play that way. I believe if they want to go to worlds, um, in J team, I can't believe they threw the way they did. I really can't, um, truly something else. 22nd Fnatic. Um, I have Fnatic going to Worlds. I thought Fnatic was the fourth best team. Um, now the thing is, I will I will say, uh, I was hoping they would play better against Excel because I think Excel really weren't that great. Um, but Fnatic barely got by them. They had to, you know, reverse sweep. Excel had to throw Game 3's draft to allow Fnatic back into the series, and Fnatic would complete this reverse sweep, right? Silver scrapes and all that. Um, allow Fnatic to get on a run, and they could be scary. That bot lane is world-class, in my opinion. Upset in Hillisung. Maybe Hillisung has not been that great in this meta, but you can't, you know, take away from the fact that they are capable of doing some scary things. This team is cert is the team that I believe can get out of um, play-ins in the LEC. I don't know, feel the same way about Madden Rogue. Despite Madden Rogue being higher on this list, after watching Saigon and Gami meet esports today, um, Fnatic are a team that can probably match that bot lane aggression and the aggression and do fine. But Rogue and Mad Lions, I don't really know if they can. I really don't know. Um, and also, Wonder, I think, is better than Arma and Top Lane when you relate it to Mad Lions when it comes to play-ins. And Kia, Kaia or whatever, whoever, for GAM Esports and Top Lane looked pretty cracked today against Hosmed, who is a top laner that, honestly, I respect um, on an international stage. Speaking of uh, Hosmed and Saigon Buffalo, I have them um, 21st. right or no no i don't no i don't no i don't one second sorry about that i altered my power rankings when i did the screenshot i was looking at it and i was like you know i don't really feel like this is the right way to do it i'm gonna change it and i never changed my notebook so 21st is Chief. Um, 21st is Chief. They haven't played. Uh, they played this weekend. Maybe. Or next weekend. Uh, winner of PGG and Order play Chief. Chief 3 0 Order. Chief are very good. Um, statistically, though, the algorithm, I mean, it was a strong win, but it was not as strong, obviously, as Chief played throughout the regular split because now it's the playoffs, and I only use playoff stats for the algorithm. Um, right now because obviously that's going to make a better read on what team power is because um, they're playing teams that are better. Obviously, they're in the playoffs. So, Chiefs 21st. Um, next, we start a group of LCS teams. So,
So we got the three LCS teams right there. Yes, 100 Thieves aren't there. Um, so, hmm, what to say? Well, what is it? we know that it's going to be EG. Sorry, I'm going to move this mic. We know it's going to be EG or TL as the third seed, right? Or the third team that's going. Seeding is another thing. 100 Thieves, C9, and then one of these two, right? Um, TL lost to 100 Thieves. Um, three to two, so it was very, very close. And um, C9 beat EG three to one, pretty, pretty easily. And that is a, it's just kind of a crazy thing to think about. All split long, we've been waiting on C9, waiting on C9, waiting on C9, and they finally show up in the playoffs. And it's hard to think about it really because EG could have thrown the series. They threw a series in spring and then came back throughout loser bracket and won, right? So, excuse me, it could happen again. Very possibly. Um, I do think EG are, are better than TL. But I, I'm not going to be surprised by any either one of these. I'm taking EG, but I won't be surprised by either. Um, C9, of course, i got to put them above them. I mean, they're going to Worlds, right? I'm not going to put them below them when they're going to Worlds. I think that um, if Berserker can continue to play the way he did against Danny, this team can be competitive. And it is capable of getting out of groups. That team is the capable one. This one, I don't think, I mean, not groups, sorry. Jesus, Christmas, not groups. No LCS teams getting out of groups. Um, Play-ins. Play-ins. Uh, C9 is capable of getting out of play-ins. Fudge is capable in top lane. Um, Blabber, Jensen. Jensen now has the record for most consecutive world appearances at eight across all of LOL Esports, I guess. Um, so that's incredible to think about, right? But, um... Yeah, I mean, they're capable of doing it if they're the three seed, honestly. Which causes a problem for a team like PSG trying to get out, or GAM Esports, or, or somebody like that, or Chief, Detonation, Focus Me, looking at some top, you know, some minor region teams here, as teams that are like, oh crap, C9's down here, all of a sudden, you know, things got a little scarier. And also for Madden Rogue, um, I mean... People can be really thrilled about Mad Lions and things like that. But C9 now, if C9 are going to play like this, they're going to start scratching the surface of what they're capable of. And I don't think we know what they're capable of. You know, we're going to we're gonna speculate and say, oh, well, they suck or this or that. And I mean, I'm like I said, I'm putting a ceiling on it. I don't think they get out of groups or nothing like that crazy. But I think that all of a sudden they are competitive. Um they're, they're clicking, right? Whoever's clicking at the end. We saw it with G2. We saw it with EG going into MSI. A team that's hot is a scary team. So C9, EG, TL are the next three. Um, 17th, we have CFO, who I had written originally at 21st. Originally I had written at 21st. I moved them. Um, and we're going to do Saigon Buffalo as well. Saigon Buffalo. Saiyan Buffalo might have been 15th last week. or 16th this week. Doesn't really matter. I think that they are a scary team and better than the second seed of the LCS right now. C9, I mean, if they can get better, who knows. Um, but CFO beat PSG. 3-2, to two, but they beat them and all split long. I've heard people say that Oyster looks pretty decent. So, um, Oyster, if you're the one seed, maybe you're competitive. If you beat PSG and PSG shows up and actually does well, in play-ins or group stage, all of a sudden it's like, well, this team, Oyster beat PSG. PSG just beat X team. So Oyster must be pretty decent, right? All of a sudden they're pretty competitive. So um, Oyster, interesting. Saigon Buffalo completely um, threw game one today against GAM Esports, uh, but came back in uh, the rest of the series to win three to two. Saigon Buffalo's bot lane is cracked. Shogun and Taki, they're locked into worlds now, which is great to see. Um, you know, I think this team is very competitive. I I, uh, I think it's because I gave them a bad rep the, at MSI that I actually pay attention to them more than other minor region teams and uh, root for them a little bit more because, you know, Vietnam hasn't been at, at Worlds for a couple of years and they actually are pretty competitive. Um, and they play a style that I like. Um, that aggressive Smash Mouth League of Legends style is something I prefer over the slow, methodical macro game. Um, I will say that it bit Saigon in the butt in game one, though. They have to learn 
fight, fight, fight is only okay when it makes sense. And uh, sometimes it's just fight, fight, and you can't do the third one, right? So um, that rhymed. So Saigon Buffalo 16th. Uh, 15th, the top rated LCS team, 100 Thebes. Um, why are 100 T above Saigon Buffalo, you may ask? Well, um, honestly, I think that they play that slow, methodical Python style, which is a poor man's version compared to the Gen G top esports EDGs of the world, for sure. But um, they can withstand that aggression from Saigon Buffalo, and I think they don't feed into it, and they can actually come out ahead. Um, 100 Thieves might not be flashy, but they play the same brand of League of Legends, game in and game out. And if you do something really well... You can be competitive. Now, when groups comes into play, I think the team is at best one in five. Or, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's feasible to go one in five. Um, it's going to be uh, anywhere between two and four and um, oh and six, right? Uh, for this team, which is probably going to be the first or second seed, honestly. I doubt that they're going to be the third seed. So, they're, I mean, if they were in play ins, I think they would struggle to get out. I really do. Because. Um, Against good teams, like, Saigon Buffalo plays aggressive, but if somebody can just, like, pl like play 100 Thieves the proper way, 100 Thieves will lose, for sure. For sure, 14th place. Well, 13th and 14th, Rogue and Mad Lions. Okay, so Rogue beat Mad Lions, that's important, right? Rogue are definitely going to Worlds. Mad Lions, I think, are going to Worlds now, too, um, after the G2 win over Misfits. But what do we think about this? Well, um, the difference between the two teams on the Rift is clear. Odo Omne versus Armid is, is a gap. However, El Yoya over Malrung is a gap. Um, you know, mid lane's kind of iffy. They play different roles, Larson and Niski. Larson's more in lane. Niski's more of a facilitator. And then bot lane, I take Mad's bot lane. However... In this matchup, game five, um, they pulled out Caitlyn Lux and with Rogue and Trimby dominated in a in a big big moment. So this is something that Rogue has to offer. Caitlyn's getting buffed going into Worlds. I went over it um, yesterday in my twelve sixteen video or the day before. Um, so if you missed that, that's up on the channel where I go over the teams that are most affected. Um, honestly, I don't know if I put Rogue down. Now that I think about it. Well, comp played Caitlyn, keep that in mind. Um, so, you know, some people are going to say, well, Mad Lions are better than Rogue. It's like, yeah, well, who showed up on the day, right? So it's a matter of who showed up. Uh, and Rogue did, Mad Lions didn't. Uh, Mad Lions has a history of sometimes not showing up at Worlds. Um, so we'll see how they do. I think that um, um, between the two, it's going to be tight to see who goes to plans and who doesn't. Um, I think... You know, Fnatic will be the other team going to play, and the other one will be the two seeds. So, um, we'll see how that goes this week. But that's where I have them. Um, a couple teams that didn't play recently. Um, these three teams didn't play. Oh. Oh. Although I think that um, Victory 5 are clearly not going to Worlds, right? Um, they are... I would take Victory 5 over all these teams. I would. So, um, fact of the matter is, right now they're still eligible. They can still make it. So, um, will they? I don't think so. Um, but the LPL is just stacked, and that's just the case of it, right? Um, when it comes to Sandbox, live and die by the bot lane, KT. I think KT, I think I said this last week, KT are built to succeed more so than Sandbox at an international event with Rascal. The Rascal factor in top lane is something Sandbox does not have outside of Prince. So, excuse me, when push comes to shove, just can't bot lane against Sandbox and you can win. I wouldn't be shocked at all if um, these two teams are the two teams that go to Worlds and Dom Juan isn't. Um, however, I think DK, I don't, I didn't go over them yet, right? So right now I have DK ahead of them, but 
you know, these three teams, I mean, they're duking it out to try and get out. I think that they are clearly better than the Western teams, though. Um, outside of this one team here, still in ninth place after dominating Misfits. I really, really don't think the West has a chance. Um, G2 might be able to pull scrims from the LCK and LPL, VCS, um, PCS. And maybe, you know, the LCS and uh, the lesser LEC teams will get PCS, VCS um, scrims. But G2 are pretty good, right? They're pretty good. Uh, Botling, Targamus is carrying Flacid. Um, Caps is going to play fine, I think. Yankos is playing good. The meta is fitting him well. And Broken Blade can play kind of anything in top lane right now. So it bodes well for G2 to be the only team that I think has a chance to get out of work, uh, groups. I was talking about it um, on the Discord. I was like, well, if they get um, a group with the LCK4 seed, they have a chance. I think that the LPL 4 seed, I don't think they beat them. Um, I really don't. Um, well, you know, honestly, LNG, maybe LNG aren't that much better than G2, right? They're not really. I have them on the same tier, which we'll get to at the end. Um, I guess LNG probably wouldn't, but I mean, um, RNG and victory five i would have over g2 it's kind of a, a team makeup situation i think victory five and rng have strong enough bot lanes that they could really take advantage of flacket and targamus in a meta that's bot lane focused and complete well or lng with light and lamau i think that bot lane no longer becomes the emphasis it becomes who can do more caps or do and be um yankos or tarzan right so um maybe g2 has a chance if it's lng in their group um However, they're going to, well, they'll be the LEC one seed, right? So, I mean, if they get LNG, no, they won't because LNG will be the four seed hypothetically. And then the LCK four seed would not be in there because you would have gotten somebody else. Huh. Huh. Well, I mean, there's no way of finishing first, I guess, really, right? It'll be just LNG. You're hoping LNG's in your group and you can compete with them. Or um, KT or Sandbox. Or Dom1. Um, speaking of Dom1, uh, we're not there yet. Speaking of them. A few teams that didn't play. RNG, LNG. And uh, Dom one or sixth. So um, in the case of uh, RNG, it's the bot lane for them. So they have to get out. I think they, they certainly are capable. LNG lost in a big way to get knocked back into the regional qualifiers. And if the RNG and Victory 5 notice that and play the way that they need to to beat LNG, it's feasible LNG doesn't get out, right? Um, I am right now in position to say I would, I'm rooting for LNG. Um, I, Tarzan and Doombi, I think are elite players. Um, but Light, Lamau, Ale, kind of whatever. RNG, Breathe is whatever. Zhao is not fit this meta and Wei has not fit this meta. So neither team are all that great when it comes to competing for the championship, but it is what it is. Dom Juan, Duck Dom showed a little bit of a flash that we hadn't seen this whole split recently so maybe he has the potential to take the next step and if he can get past prince get past aiming now all of a sudden we're in a position where maybe he is showing up in a big way leading into worlds where they need him to because showmaker has not really performed all that well this split neither has canyon um and top lane is a mess because they don't know who to play bird all or nugri luckily the other four players are respectable and that's why they're up there because um Six-man rosters are not my friend. Fifth place, T1. Um, the manner... Shoot. Sorry. The manner in which they lost to Gen G was pretty ugly. They got smoked. If you missed my video earlier today, I went over T1 previewing their stats and things like that for Worlds. Um, I've done Gen G and Isaris as well. 
um, as far as being the Latin American representatives. They are not in the top 25, as you see. Algorithm, their game five was outstanding. You should watch Astral versus Isaris Gaming. Um, Team Isaris is um, game five. VOD. That was a great ending. Um, but T1 got smoked. Smoked in every which way. Guma played okay, which is something that I talked about this morning. I was like, maybe there's something to build off of there. Um, but the other four roles, not very good. Um, now it becomes LCK versus LPL. Um, right now I still have them definitely getting out of uh, groups, but I do not think that they are going to compete, which gets us to the next three teams. Well, we're just going to finish the board here because this is um, pretty self-explanatory here, and we'll talk about it a bit. So why do I have these teams where I do? We talked about it on the Discord, actually, a bit, um, arguing about EDG and where they fall. Um, so, Gen G beat T1 soundly. There's no reason for me to take T1, Gen G out. Uh, Chovy and Ruler are the best players in their role right now. Ruler at worst, top three. I went over this in my Gen G preview two days ago. Um, Gen G are just cruising, and they're dominating. JDG beat top three to two. Um, we'll see how that goes tomorrow. Um, I will preview that in my roundup, and my prediction will be, like I said, in the members-only video. Um, now, I don't want to, like, show my hand. Obviously, I'm going to predict JDG by how much. I guess watch the video. Um, this is pretty self-explanatory. Um, top are pulling out King Ten, King Tian in top lane and benching Wayward, and they did this to end the split. This is not the time to do that crap. Um, Dom Juan are doing it, and it's a terrible idea. And, I mean, Dom Juan, it's more egregious because Nugri is, like, a known commodity where Wayward is, you know, he's good, but he's young still. But, geez, Louise, this is not the time to be doing this. And they and they just beat EDG. Um, EDG clearly not at tops level. But now, ready for the tier list? Here we go, here we go. They are at their level. If this is what they're going to do, then they're at their level. Um, Guess that'll be the tears. So, what if you're gonna split scrims at this point in the split? Absolutely not. You are not ready for worlds. You're not ready to go on a run. Not again, not the way Gen G and JDG are playing. There is no way that top can pull this crap and bring a six man and be swapping back and forth and getting there. I really don't see it. Um, People are going to say, well, it's happened in the past and teams have went on runs. Yes, but the way that Gen and JDG are playing, like, no, absolutely not. Um, and watch, Top will win tomorrow, and it'll be like, oh, yeah, you said yesterday this and that. And it's like, yeah, I did. Thanks for the view, buddy. Um, but Top, a mess. AD EDG, all of a sudden, not as messy. I mean, they have a jungle situation going on, but right alongside them, and T1 are kind of just, well, we just came off of a blowout loss, but we're still T1. We still have very good young players that are under a ton of pressure. And maybe going to North America will give them a breath of fresh air, and they will want to perform well. I mean, honestly, who knows, right? Um, I mean, who knows? So that's it. And then after T1, I think that Dom won through Victory 5 are very similar in teams that's just like, oh, well, they're good, but I just don't think they have a chance. Um, I don't think they're getting there. And then after Victory 5 to Sandbox, I'm like, it could end up any way, shape, or form. Um, outside of like, uh, you know, minor region teams outside of Saigon Buffalo, um, maybe doing worse than where they are, but... I'm sure the rest of the teams are just kind of at Worlds going for the ride and going to be out in groups at best. Or out in play-ins. Um, this is not, you know, a year where it was like, the top eight are definitely capable. Like, we had teams in there that's like, oh, well, they could win, they could win. Yeah, sure. 
Sure, I could see this team winning. Now we're getting to the nitty gritty. Who is ready when it's about time to get going and, and show up and go to North America and win the trophy? I only have Gen G and JDG right now there. Top just took themselves out. So comment down below with your opinions on the power rankings. Uh, like the video, if you like it, subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Hit the links. Excuse me. Jeez. Hit the links in the description. Follow me on Twitter. Become a member of the channel and uh, join the Discord. So, like I said, thank you for watching, and I uh, hope you come back for more content.